Hey there everyone, welcome back to another Clea Strange Making vlog. This is part two and just forewarned, this is a bit of a long one. I am recording all of this en masse and just chopping it up where I go, so that's why voiceover Amanda is here. Hi, nice to see you all again. So this portion of the video will be all about the bodice up to making the design for the sleeves. Just an FYI. I'm also back in here as voiceover Amanda because a lot of you really like following these tutorials to make your own builds and so I'm giving a little more explanation because this one's kind of a wild one. So what you're seeing right now is me uh, doing the designs for the circles of Clea's bodice. I did not record myself uh, saran wrapping and duct taping my mannequin to be able to make these this pattern. So, But it's pretty self-explanatory. You can kind of see that I have saran wrap and duct tape on my mannequin. And the duct tape is a surface for me to draw on to make the designs. And then we'll later cut out and use as my pattern for the bodice. So I hope you enjoy this section. I will pop back in with voiceover Amanda when it's time for... I wish I was not standing right in front of the camera. Holy cow. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will pop back in later when it's time to explain some more things. So enjoy the music and enjoy uh, Clea Strange pattern making. Hello, voiceover Amanda back again. I will tell you that I did rework a lot of these lines. Uh, this is a very chaotic design that she has. And so a lot of those lines may look really wonky right here, but I did go back in and redo them. Um, just, you know, just an FYI. Uh, it ended up working out just fine after I redid them and took them to the counter to start cutting them. So right here, you'll see I am cutting up the patterns. Do not forget to put your registration marks in there, uh, the notches. So whenever you cut your pattern back out, you can attach them back together in the right spots and make them match. So if you decide to use this method, make sure when you're cutting these things out to put those uh, notches in there so you can match your patterns back up. So, and also don't forget to label. Labeling is very important when you're pattern making. After I cut out the duct tape patterns, I then transfer them to paper. So I was able to shore them up a little bit more, make them a little more even, get everything to look nice. And also I just prefer using paper patterns to cut out on fabric because the duct tape pattern is a little wonky sometimes. So this is just an ease factor, but you don't have to do it. Great to see you all again. This is Clea part, uh, <laughs> insert part number we're on right here. Uh, yeah, so I hope you all have been enjoying so far the Clea journey. I don't know how many parts I have before this because I've been recording this a bit differently than I have been in the past my weekly vlogs. <sighs> Cat hair <sighs> and my lipstick. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I've been recording this one a little bit differently than I have been my other weekly vlogs because I've been out of town a lot. I've been working here and there. Nothing really has been a full like week of work per se. Um, so I've just been filling it in there, here in and there. But now C2E2 is officially over. I need to get this thing done for Dragon Con. So I'm going to kick it into high gear. 
hopefully all my pieces will be here by Dragon Con. If not, we're wearing leggings that are not her real leggings. I have no choice, but <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, today we're going to be working on her bodice. I'm hopefully going to be at least cutting out and assembling the leather pieces and getting ready for the overlay of the spandex on the side. Um, if we'll get this done, we'll do top stitching on the um, bodice as well. And if that gets done, we will start really finishing the bodice, adding the sleeves, and then I will need to paint the sleeves. And as far as the bodice is, we're gonna get done as we can. Because um, then after the bodice, we have the belt area to make. And after the belt, we have the gauntlets. And then she's done until my pants get in here. I've talked about them before. I ordered them from a friend who created the design. Um, but they are coming from the UK, so I don't necessarily know when they're gonna get here. Hopefully very soon. I told her that I needed it before Dragon Con, so we'll see. Um, yeah, that's pretty much Clea. Clea is interesting. She's like a half build because the boots, there are no boots. They're underneath the legging and the legging's already finished. So I just have like the top to do, which I'm really pumped about. So without further ado, let's get going on this. Oh man, I just really love this build. It's going together so well. And also thank you for everybody who's been loving my C2E2 content. I have just had a resurgence in cosplay goofiness that I just love. I don't know what's gotten into me, but it's definitely refueled my love for cosplay to just go to conventions, hang out with my friends and make goofy content and good content. Not necessarily all the time, always goofy, but I like goofy. So that's been really fun to do. Uh, Casey and Alex have been a peach. We had a great time in C2E2, so I hope we can replicate that energy and vibe for Dragon Con. So let's get Clea done. Let's go. All right, it is time to start cutting down some leather. Just an FYI for your all's knowledge. Um, this is, um, yeah, calfskin, calfskin leather. Um, I bought one skin of it. Um, it is, I believe, uh, medium to lightweight leather. And I, by this time where I am, when I'm recording this voiceover, I will say I have used every single inch of this for the entire Clea build. So if that's a fabric roundabout idea of how much that I've used of this leather, that's how much I've used. I did not think I would use the entire skin of the leather, but I ended up using it. And I'm very happy because I am squeaking out edges right now, I'll tell you what, but um, I did end up using all the leather. So I was very happy with the purchase of that I made and there's no waste that's going with this. I am using it 100% completely for my costume and I'm just really proud of that. Um, anytime I, I use um, animal skins in my um, cosplay builds, I will keep it. I never throw any portion of that away. I will always use it for something else or figure something else out or donate it or give it to somebody else, you know? Um, when it comes to leather, it's, it's up to you if you want to use it, you know, however reasoning you want to or not. This can easily be done with foam and painted foam or fabric for that matter, or any other fabric. I mean, it's just purple. It's just purple. Uh, so I just want to pop in here and give you that FYI. So I just love the way leather looks. That's why I decided to use it. But yeah, here we are. We're making the bodice. Um, this is, uh, the opposite side of some spandex that I had that I am using for those little side pieces that will be painted that I will explain here in a bit. Wow. Wow, my silver hair really does show off in this video. Yes, I just got it toned and silvered and I feel like Clea is sinking into my soul with my hair. Oh my god. Hi y'all. It's another night of Clea Strange cosplay making. So let me zoom her in here and I can show you what we've got so far. Okay, so it doesn't look like much, but I had to do a lot of the top stitching on the leather if you saw in the previous video or time and whenever I was posting this can't quite remember, but I had to go in and do all of this top stitching to get the leather um, seams to lay down nice. This is the back pieces, so that's what I'm showing you. This is the front and then the side here. 
So I think tonight I'm gonna focus on adding in the circles up here because I can't go any further without adding in the top stitching because it'll just be easier to do it on this piece before I attach it to this piece. But this piece needs to be painted. <laughs> so these pieces need to be actually finished first before I move any further. Um, I could probably go ahead and establish the corset back on the back, but I think for tonight, since I'm getting started and it's like a quarter till 10 on a Friday night, I think I'm gonna focus on painting these guys and doing the top stitching on top of the front. My only worry is that she's kind of has this weird bubble right here. And it's not because like, it's not fitting around like the chest. Well, I guess it is not fitting around the chest area. It's just like, this isn't pulled around the breasts well. And I'm hoping when I have the pieces on, it'll kind of form up around and be better. If not, I'll have to put like a weird dart in the middle. I'm not sure. I hope that that fishes out or something like that, but we'll have to see. So top stitching tonight and painting these side pieces with the circles. Hopefully I can find enough imagery online, which has been quite difficult with this project. So I've actually been using the already store-bought costumes of her to find some design work because there's nothing, there's nothing online besides what we've seen from her Insta from Shirley Theron's Instagram and um, the post credit scene in Doctor Strange. So I'm gonna do the best I can. But the good thing is my leggings are on their way. I'm very excited about that. So they'll get here. I plan to just, I need to get some, some boots that are really skinny to the calf so they can fit underneath the leggings so I can put stirrups on the leggings. So, I really feel like I can finish this before Dragon Con. Right now it is August the 12th. I leave for Dragon Con September 1st. I feel like I can finish this. Even though it feels very rushed, it doesn't feel rushed. So everything's moving along. Let's get to some top stitching. Just so you all know, this tracing wheel trick does work on tube leather. Um, I'm pushing very hard and I'm going over it multiple times, but when I lift it here in a second, you will see that the, that the um, pattern did transfer onto the leather. And then I will go over it with a marker or pen because I then intend to sad stitch over it. So just an FYI, this is a very easy way to transfer marks from a pattern onto something that is um, leather. It does work. Tracing wheels are handy. And also, all this top stitching requires a lot of thread, FYI. Um, I've, I've almost gone through about five spools of thread from Guterman. Um, if you decide to do this build, make sure you buy a lot of purple thread and you do the top satin stitching because you'll go through a lot of it, just FYI. <laughs> I said FYI a lot during this, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey there folks, welcome back to another day, 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 day. Another day of working on Clea Strange. So let me bring you up to speed. I've been doing paint swatch testing for the side pieces of her bodice because she has those um, circle swirls. I don't know, whatever. But I'm trying to avoid buying more printed fabric because it's so expensive to get custom prints. And so I'm just starting to draw and paint on my own on fabric, which is very possible if you choose the right paints. And I have finally found an option. I think it'll be good for the sides and um, it requires two steps. So if you decide to go this route versus getting some fabric custom made, um, you will definitely need to do what I'm going to show you. Now, first off, I have stretched this matte black fabric, which actually is spandex, but it's fine, um, over top of a piece of leather. That's the same material that the bodice is. Um, I did that because I didn't want the stretch and I didn't want the movement, the crinkle. I wanted it to be nice and flat and it will pull because I'm going to have a corset back. So it will like pull around my waist fine, but um, it's flat lined to something that is sturdier. So FYI, that's what I did. If you choose not to do that, totally fine. Whatever you want to do, but here are the paint swatches. So it's kind of messy and I will say the color that you're seeing on screen is a little bluer than what these actual paint colors are, but it's pretty damn close. So this is the option that we're going with. 
come on a jest no will you maybe no. i don't know anyways it's right here i tried a bunch of different color combinations of blues and purples down here and i finally soaked up or soaked up whatever picked this one and reason being that i laid down white paint on the fabric first let that completely dry then put just the purple on top and it is almost perfect um the white super opaque fabric provided a base kind of like gesso wood and painting and then i was able to layer one layer of the purple on top instead of layering over and over and over and over because fabric will soak up paint even if you put medium in there, it's like a paint. So having a nice like gesso type thick layer base at the bottom is working perfectly. And one stroke over top of it makes it look like even. So it doesn't look streaky, which is what I was worried about as well. So I did draw out <laughs> partially the areas that we're going to paint. I'm going to lay down the white, let that completely dry, then lay down the purple. So here's the paints that I chose. Here is the white. I am a huge fan of Jacquard textile paints. I think they work the best with fabric. Um, I love Angelus leather paint, but I like that for foam and leather. But for fabric, things that are super porous, Jacquard is my absolute favorite. And this is their textile. Literally, it says super opaque white. I bought it for that. It's thick boy. And then here's the purple that I'm going with, another Jacquard paint. Um, sorry, it's kind of blurry, but it is the uh, Neo opaque jacquard in violet. Um, so that's what I'm using paint wise. And then also for the silver streaks, jacquard, my favorite, the Lumiere, Lumiere brand, which is slightly metallic. Um, those are those little silver streaks that are going on the top too. It is literally metallic silver. So I don't want to do a lot of paint matching. I want a little like, paint mixing. I just want to lay down the color and move on. So that's what we're going to do right now. Get that going. And then once those are dry, I'll attach to the bodice. Yay! So let's get going. Okay, so after the little touch-ups I did, I did a very common, easy trick uh, patterning method from clothes that I already have. Instead of going out and finding a pattern from a commercial brand, use what you have. I have this top that fit perfect and I knew it would hit well underneath that bodice and I used it as a pattern to create my little undershirt. Uh, just when you do this, make sure you lay everything down, have a invisible ink pen or chalk to mark your spots, and then make sure you add that seam allowance back in when you are going to cut out the fabric, but it's super handy. I love doing this trick with patterning. All right, everyone, do not get mad at me. This is fabric that I've already had in my stock, yet it is no longer out on market. It is a gradient fade fabric, just like her fabric is in the actual um, costume. It does gradiate from dark pink to purple. I suggest if you decide to do this on your own to dip gradient dye purple uh, pink fabric to purple, but I already had this in my stock. I knew I was going to use it, so don't get mad at me. You can't find it anywhere else. I bought it at Joann's, oh, like seven years ago for an intended mega build randomly. <laughs> get a taller tripod. Actually, this is it's not even a tripod. It's like a clamp-on thing. I don't know. I don't know. But hey, hi. Wow, why am I red? I love how like this is usually the first time I look at myself in a mirror or camera and all day after work and I'm just like, but you guys seem to really like the post-work very relatable vibe. So I'm going to keep going with <laughs> 
Anyways, welcome back to another part, week, whatever. We're working on Clea. Today, I am going to finish the side panels that we painted last time. I'm going to attach those to the front panels and then possibly attach the back panels as well. Finish all of that up, get that prepped um, and ready for grommeting, grommeting, grom, grommet, grommeting, grommeting? Placing grommets, who knows, for the center back uh, because these, the, the bodice part will be all one and then the sleeves are actually going to be a separate uh, garment. They're not gonna be attached to the bodice because I have learned my lesson learned my lesson of attaching sleeves to a bodice that needs to move a lot. Um, Captain Marvel taught me to do that. Uh, Katana taught me to do that. Uh, so when you're making these suits that have a really uh, armored over the top, like front and back panel, and then the sleeves are kind of tacked on, the majority of the time the sleeves are actually attached to something underneath that armor piece that helps the actor or person move around a lot, gives you way more mobility in your shoulder um, and fits a lot better because then you can cinch in that or, or make whatever size the bodice itself and not have to worry about the sleeves having to move or function or move or not fit. Trust me, this method really works. I should have been doing this for everything that I've done because <laughs> I don't know why I don't think that way. Who knows? But we'll get that top put together. Now, I think one thing that's going to slow me down is these sleeves. So the sleeves on Clea have insane, like, design work. This whole costume is custom designed printed fabric. It is. It's 100%. And so I'm skirting past it by painting, drawing, all kinds of stuff. So when we get to the sleeves, we're going to have to decide what we're going to do. I don't know yet. Because <sighs> they're really thin lines. And I'm gonna have to freehand all of it. We'll see what we do when we get there. It might be paint, it might be like gel pen. <laughs> I don't know. I have to see what I have. So not gonna think about that till I get to that point, but I'm really happy with the way this is going. I like these painted pieces. I think they look really nice, even though the tape kind of came up a little bit and exposed some white underneath of it, but I'm going over it with purple and it's fine but I think there's like 15 days or something <laughs> till Dragon Con. Um, I'm actually feeling pretty good on it. The only thing that's gonna slow me down or worry is the, well, I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna finish it. I just need to get the entire top done this week and have next week for the belt and gauntlets. And then the cape will be draped on the back. Not worried about that. I did just remember that I think I'm gonna have to 3D print her belt buckle. Maybe. Hopefully not. I don't know if I have time to design that. We'll see. Anyways, bodice. bodice. We're working on the bodice. Okay, here we go. I'm holding it together in the back, but essentially, here she is. At least the bodice. There's a, it's gonna be a corset back, so it'll off to the races, buddy. It will definitely look much better when it's all corseted up, but it fits very nice. I was really worried about this. I don't know why, because like this to me seems like it should be lower, but it's actually above the breast line. 
I will say this needs to come down a little bit because it's choking my up here a little bit. But armholes are good, perfect. It is off to the races with my cat tonight. This is gray, or this hits down here. It'll come in gray around the waist. I love the sides. This turned out pretty dope. So yeah, so pseudo first fitting completed. Now, um, trim the top. I guess we're on the undershirt. I really need to figure out that design on the sleeves. It's gonna be hard. I think she's looking pretty good. It's a little dimpy right here in the middle, but I think when it's not on my dress form, it'll be okay. So I've got center back figured out where I'm going to draw my line for the grommeting. Yeah, I'm very happy with it. I do think I'm gonna go in with paint and make it a little more dimensional, like around these edges and um, around the princess scene to add some paint just to make it pop up a little bit. But I think it looks so good. Here, what this is what it looks like with the armor on. Yas. It doesn't look as filled out, but when it's on me, it feels a little more round, but wow, I really dig it. And I can't wait to paint that armor. That's probably gonna be one of the last things I do. Um, so I might have to extend the center back just because of the bulk of the leather that's on it. It doesn't necessarily, cl it closes, but it's really tight. So I think I might actually move that, um, put some more leather on the, or not leather, but foam on the back to make the back extend a little bit less, just for more comfortable. But the sides look really good. I'm quite impressed with this paint. Like those aren't vinyl. That's, that's just layers of paint. Oh, this guy was only one layer of paint, but very happy with this. Yeet! Now to work on the sleeves. So the sleeves, so here's my little undershirt. It's inside out, but my little undershirt. And these are my sleeves. So my sleeves are gradient from darker pink to purple towards the wrist and I have to figure out how I'm going to get the design on here I don't know yet I'd like to essentially just draw it on but I don't know if it's gonna work I'm gonna research some Cricut vinyl some ink some some something tonight so that'll be the next video it took me a while to get it but I sketched out an example of what I think the sleeve looked like um, on Procreate using the cape pattern as a base. Credit to that artist in the link below. Awesome. Um, then I did the old Wanda Maximoff trick, what I did with her cape. So I projected it and then my cat's butt's in the way. And then hopefully I'm going to go over that with a white gel pen and then over the white gel pen with some kind of paint marker. I'm, I'm not sure yet because these lines need to be very precise and I don't think paint's going to really work as well. I don't know. Wow. Salem, you're really in the way, buddy, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> Anyways. So yeah, it works out. Um, if this, method work, if this method works out, I will definitely have the sleeve pattern available for you guys to have either somehow for projection if you'd like to, but let's see if this works.
Hey there, everybody. Okay, so the proje projection, I can't talk tonight. The projection worked. I was able to transfer the design using a white um, gel pen that is heat activated or heat removed. So when I'm ready and I have the designs down with the paint that I choose, I can hit it with the um, iron and it will remove the ink. But um, I am sitting here contemplating on what paint to use. And I've gone back and forth between markers, gel pens, and paint. I think I have come to conclude that I'm going to do paint, but in an old fashioned way. I think a lot of 90s kids will get a kick out of this because I know my mom used this a lot on decorative t-shirts, puppy paint. <laughs> and although right now this is, this is the Jacquard Lumiere 3D paint. I actually purchased this for Wanda and didn't end up using it. So I used it on a scrap. Won't be able to use it for Clea. It's way too red orange. Um, it's, this is not dry yet and I've already screwed it up, but you can kind of see how it looks. Um, the red is way too red orange, but the purple is good. And that is this brand, uh, Marabou Fashion Liner. It's a little more thin, not necessarily as puffy as the three-dimensional paint is. So I'm gonna let these sit overnight. I'm gonna see what I like better give it a stretch test to see if it stays on the fabric well. And then I'm gonna go to Joann's and get the colors that I need, which I've determined to line, to draw in this design. They're gonna be white, dark purple, and dark red, which is, I think that's on, I don't want a dark red. I think I'm just gonna stick with this purple and a dark purple and white, just because, why, why red? That makes no sense no sense. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I like the way it goes on. It's very visible. I thought about keeping, or I thought about keeping the white ink on here and just going over it a few times, but I heat removes it and I need, and I'm going to have to heat set these paint, these paints. So I might as well just get white paint and go over it. And I think it'll be cleaner anyways. So that's the next step. Another trip to Auntie Joanne, which is fine. I like that one. Um, but to get uh, puff paints or liner paints is what more or less I'm talking about. I think I want to go try to find this brand specifically, and it was an artisan craftsman. Um, barring how it looks in the morning, if it's seeped in too much to the fabric, I will go with the Lumiere brand or whichever brand I can find that is more three dimensional. That is more standoffish. And I think it also kind of looks cool with the, the glossy 3D look. So I don't know, creative license. <laughs> but I'm really happy that I was able to get the design on these. Um, I will put the design either up for sale or up for free. It honestly didn't take me a lot to make. It's just a bunch of circles on top. I used the cape as a reference for like the, the, cape, uh, the cape fabric design. Gosh, why can't I think? that a wonderful artist in my in my Cleo Strange um, cosplay group online uh, created and is for sale on Spoonflower. If you guys would like to go grab it, the link is below. Um, I'll, I'll just show you, I'll show you right now. So this is the cape. It's a lot more blue on screen, but it's actually more purple. So this will be gathered up in the back of the bodice and flowing well. But I use this as a base to kind of see the thicknesses of the of the circles and kind of place placing them and where and whatnot, but um, yeah. So yeah, so uh, I'll have that either up for sale or up for download. Probably just for download because it didn't take me long to make. Um, don't need to be selling too much, but if you know you chuck a buck my way, that's great. Um, so yeah. We are moving along on Clea. I'm very happy with this. This is going great. The only thing I'm worried about is my pants getting here on time from the UK. If not for Dragon Con, I'll just have to wear black leggings and boots, and that's okay. Um, Cause I'm not gonna stress about it. But I do want this, I do want this to be a big splash at Dragon Con. I think, 
I have a lot of friends that are looking forward to it. I have some photo shoots scheduled with some of my close friends that are doing similar costumes. I'm looking forward to it, so. Three cheers to Cleo, let's keep moving along. Oh, today is Wednesday of this week, so I'm really happy. Things are moving. Hey, Cleo. Anyways, it is Wednesday of this week. No, it is Thursday of this week. And we are going to do the designs on the sleeves. I finally got my paint choices figured out. So this is what I got. <clears throat> so I believe for these sleeves, there is a dark purple line, a dark pink line, a light pink line, and a white line scattered throughout. Um, and so I'm avoiding any kind of heat transfer, vinyl transfer. I'm avoiding custom printing and I'm avoiding painting kinda because it's a very, very thin line. So I need something that will go on it. As I spoke about just before this video, puppy paint. So I kind of have a mixture of both. I have two little, they're called like the fashion liners. I don't know what that means, but I've got a pink and a purple and these, when they dry, do dry darker. So this line right here is the purple and it's actually quite nice and it stretches and goes with the fabric too. So I'm assuming the pink is going to dry darker and it's going to do the same. Then I went and got the puppy paint type from Jacquard purple or pink and white pearl actually for the lighter lines because if I got the same color in the fashion liner brand or whatever, it would dry darker and I, I don't want that. So we're going with these and hopefully all these bottles will be enough. I think they will be, oh, hopefully. <laughs> if not, we'll go back and get some more, but um, I'm gonna get started on this. Hopefully I'll get all of this done tonight and let these fully dry. They have to fully dry for like 24, 48 hours and then I have to heat set them then I can add them to my garment. So I just want to get these done and out of the way so I can work on something else. Um, after this, I'm going to go ahead and start patterning the belt area or I might, might do the gauntlets. Not sure yet. Maybe the gauntlets because they're smaller and look like they look easier. So we'll see. But let's get to uh, <clears throat> puppy painting. <laughs> I feel like a mom in the 90s. Okay, voiceover Amanda popping in here one last bit before the video ends. This fashion liner pin, you will end up getting better at it, I promise. It looks like I'm going really slow, it's because I am, but the viscosity of this paint that's coming out of the pin is much thinner than the puff paint, and the puff paint is really thick, so when it comes out, it goes sometimes, and you'll see that I did make mistakes. But this pin really, really was very smooth coming out after I got the hang of it, and, um, it ended up working extremely nice. I loved these fashion liner pins from Marabou and I did purchase them at Artisan Craftsman, which is a local art supply store, not Joann's. That's where you're probably gonna be able to find these um, instead of a big box store like Joann's or Michael's. Just an FYI. The puff paint did work, but I will say these worked out a lot better as far as like putting it on smoother and making them look screen printed. Okay, so here is sleeve one. I'm happy with it. I think the white is very apparent, but I have to keep remembering this dark pink and purple. You see, you see how it's starting to go dark, will go darker. Um, so it's pretty much gonna be the light pink and the white that you're really gonna see for color. And then the rest of it's gonna be pretty dark. So I'm gonna remove it off of this. And you can see <laughs> spots that I've messed up, but honestly, it went over pretty well. I do recommend this. We'll see how this all looks once it's dry. So I'm gonna do the other sleeve now. Okay, my arms may be sore, but <laughs> we got it. Here's what it's starting to look like with the drying of the dark pink and purple. And here I just finished the second sleeve. So there's a little bit of difference in all of them, but honestly, these are pretty dope. <laughs> It was kind of fun to do them. They're not perfect, but it's cosplay. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just happy I was able to get screen printed fabric the old fashioned way. 
puppy paint. <laughs> Okay, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for lasting this long. I know this was a long one, but I wanted to make sure that this video had a start and end cap. Uh, we will continue with part three on the undershirt and adding in those sleeves and looking and seeing how they turned out and then continuing on with the build. But thank you so much for following along my Clea Strange build. This has been a fun one to do. If you want to keep watching, please subscribe to my channel. I am always posting cosplay centered stuff as well as some other spooky things that will happen in upcoming months. You do not want to miss it. I promise. Um, so yeah, until next time, please subscribe to my channel and comment below if you have any questions. I'm always in those comments answering those questions with you guys. And I will see you all next week. Bye!